failure is ultimately your output. So what you obtain from Bayesian parameter estimation is a probabilistic, probabilistic constraints. Now, if you're fortunate and your posterior is a normal distribution, you can characterize it with a mean and a width. And if you're lucky for that parameter, you can quote the result of the posterior marginalized over all the other parameters as you know, a value plus or minus an uncertainty. Now, often it's not the case. Often you have some asymmetry in your distribution um, or you may have so much correlation between parameters that it's not meaningful to actually project in 1D. So in this case, you may want to show results like this, for example, which are marginalized over main parameters, but you still see, you can still see a lot of information about your, your posterior in these distributions. There are also other ways to characterize. So if you're not, if you don't have a Gaussian distribution, you can, there are still moments you can use. There are still statistical uh, information you can provide about your, your posterior. So for example, the median can be used instead of the mean. So there are, there are tricks that you can use if you really want to condense your posterior into a few numbers. But I will, I will emphasize, I think personally that often you want to, you want to look at the least integrated uh, information possible, uh, you know, whenever, whenever it's meaningful. So this, this information is better than trying to integrate out in more details uh, this, um, this, this posterior. And let me also, and we'll see examples of this in the hands-on session. Let me highlight that when your parameters are correlated, you have to be especially careful. Uh, a projection in 1D can be, um, if, if not helpful and borderline um, misleading, if, you, if your parameters are highly correlated and you have, there's some, there's some situation where really your 1D distribution will, not, will really not be helpful. Now, I think I've already mentioned this, but let me highlight again that theoretical information is and can be included systematically in Bayesian parameter estimation. It can be done by simple inclusion in the model. So if you're really, really certain about some ingredient in your model, for example, your, the, the lattice equation of state, um, you may simply want to use this information and not, in a sense, not assign any parameters on this. Although you can still do it, of course. Now, other information, if you have, if you have insights, but not necessarily precise uh, guidance for the model. So you know that the parameter is probably between some range, but you cannot pinpoint the value. All of this can be included in the priors. And again, in, there'll be an example as homework today that looks at what is the effect of the parameter prior on constraining a model parameter. And it's really symbiotic in the sense that if you have strong priors, you can get much, much stronger constraint on your parameters. So you, sh so in a sense, it's not the, the theoretical insights is not in competition with the Bayesian parameter estimation. You can really combine the two and obtain much better constraints. Now, let me say a few words on a practical